For the leaders of the joint, people like Felix Warburg, who was from the very beginning the head of the organization, the Rosenwalls, the Rosenbergs, uh, the uh, Morgenthaus, the Adlers, the various uh, other people of that kind, uh, they were not ethnically Jewish. They didn't consider themselves ethnically Jewish at all. Their religion was taken rather lightly. They were largely reformed Jews or liberal Jews, with very few exceptions, <coughs> who uh, went to the synagogue twice or three times a year, and they maintained uh, the Jewish festivals and so on, reading from the uh, Sidur uh, in Ashkenazi pronunciation without understanding a word of what they were, what they were reading, uh, unless they looked at the other side of the page where there was a German translation. But they had a very strong feeling of obligation to these co-religionists. The Orthodox, for them it was not no problem. Uh, they knew that they were members of a Jewish people and they tried to maintain Orthodox in America, which was rather difficult to do at that time. And then there were the Socialists, either of the anti-Zionist kind, uh, really uh, people who had belonged to one kind or another, largely Bundist, in Russia and Poland, in other words, socialists who were anti-religious and anti-Zionist, or they were Zionists who were socialists. The socialists and the, the Zionists and the Bundists hardly talked to each other. But in America they had to collaborate in uh, trade unions, and they did, and they had their representation in the joint. This is the background, you see. Unless you understand that, you don't really understand why the JDC took very great care not to identify with Zionism and to treat the socialist anti-Zionists with a kind of patriarchal, pleasant and uh, sort of uh, supercilious kind of attitude. Uh, when you read the documentation, when you read the letters, what, they, what the JDC in New York really wanted was to break the European Jews, and that was the main clientele of JDC in the 1920s and the 1930s, to bring them up to the standard of American Jews, that they should live in liberal societies where, like in America, they would have equal rights. Now, in America, they had formal equal rights. They didn't really have equal rights at all because clubs were close to Jews, uh, universities had unofficial uh, limitations on Jewish participation and uh, Jewish students attending these universities. There was plenty of popular anti-Semitism in America. The Christian churches were no great friends of Jews, neither the Catholics nor the Protestants, but there was formal equality and therefore uh, as the Jewish minority grew in America and became important for uh, uh, congressmen and, and, and senators and later on for elections to the presidency, uh, they had to be considered as at least formally equal. So this formal equality people, these German Jews, stuck very closely to. And they became very vehement American patriots in order to prove to the American people that they were Americans and not members of some ethnic minority which would have double loyalty to America and to their particular ethnic group outside of America. Uh, they not only contributed money, they tried to ease the conditions without actually trying to directly influence the internal politics of Jewish communities outside of the United States. They collaborated with people with whom they had no uh, common ground whatsoever. The typical case is Soviet Russia, where the joint came in order to help the poor Jews 
in, who were in a terrible situation after the Bolshevik Revolution, who were considered, most of them, uh, non-citizens in Russian licensee, who uh, had no, no uh, civic rights, and in order to bring them up to a situation where they would have civic rights. So, the joint was the first institution that introduced modern tractors into the Soviet Union. And the first tractor stations that were to work these newly established state and collective farms, the Sovkhozy and the Kolkhozy, came from the joint. Unbelievable, but fact. And uh, then these uh, uh, agricultural uh, uh, establishments uh, run by uh, engineers and experts from America, Jews from America, working for the joint, then as a kind of a uh, counter to that, they demanded from the Soviet authorities and they got it. The establishment of Jewish villages, of ag Jewish agricultural workers, of uh, especially in the southern Ukraine, in the area of Kherson and, and the Crimea, but also elsewhere, and the absorption of the licensee of the people without any civic rights into Soviet society by turning them into factory workers. This was the uh, people in New York, the joint people in New York, were no sympathizers of communists. Not at all. But in order to help the Jews, you negotiate with the devil. And you negotiate in such a way that your people will benefit for it in the Soviet Union. They employed a Russian Jew, Joseph Rosen, to uh, uh, deal with the Soviets. And uh, by the 1930s, this became a collaboration with the Soviet Union, but only on the social welfare and, and economic plane. In 1934-35, the Stalinist regime was strong enough to get rid of the joint. And from 35 on, they rather quickly uh, annihilated everything that the joint stood for. They uh, dissolved uh, the various uh, offices. By 1938, all the Soviet Jews who had worked for the joints were dead, killed either directly or sent to the Gulag to die there. The tractor stations were taken over. The Jewish settlements, the Jewish villages were changed. They, they became Soviet kolkhozy. The Russians and Ukrainians joined them and the Jews, even if they became a majority, were mostly no longer in charge of their own villages because a new uh, attitude to the Jews developed in the Soviet Union, originally a, an attitude of uh, toleration of ethnic and uh, no longer religious, but ethnic kind of an autonomy, this disappeared completely. And the policy from 1938 was, was clearly a policy of forced assimilation. Now, you can say that the uh, joint in Soviet Russia failed. But it didn't really. It managed to help in a significant way the transition from a capitalist system where the Jews were on the lowest level, of course, and a group of them in the middle level, to transform them into Soviet citizens who could uh, hold their position within Soviet society. And I think that that is of rather radical import.